you very much for that. It's very much appreciated. Um, so it's great to be here, everybody. Um, I put together a little presentation, which I'm hoping you'll um, enjoy. Just, okay, is that better? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, great. So listen, uh, Tomas O'Leary is my name. Thank you very much, Monty, for that wonderful introduction. I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Um, a lot of you would know me from Passive House Academy, but uh, the mothership, the original company that we set up in 1993, it's hard to believe, 27 years ago now, is called Moss Art. And we essentially, uh, everything we do is, is Passive House or, or better. So we're designers, we're consultants, and as Monty said, um, we deliver training. So, you know, we've been busy all around the world on that and uh, having a really wonderful time doing that. Um, I'm coming to you this evening from our passive house, uh, which you can see here. And um, we called it out of the blue for obvious reasons. We were sitting here one night thinking, right, what do we call the house? And in Ireland, we don't have house numbers because we all live in the sticks. And I thought, well, we get our energy for free from, uh, from the sun, so why don't we just call it out of the blue? Seems like a good idea. So um, we've been living here now since uh, 2004. And uh, myself, my wife, and our three daughters, two cats and, and a dog all live in here. Um, and uh, very, we're living in splendid isolation and great comfort here. So uh, as, as Monty said, I mean, I never imagined, you know, back in 2004 that in 2017, I'd be on top of the tallest passive house building in the world. Um, we were the certifiers for the Cornell Tech building. And just over uh, Deborah Mollis's head there, you can see the UN building. Um, and you know we're now working actually with see very senior people at the United Nations in trying to spread um, the passive house uh, sort of gospel around the world. So it's, it's been a, a, an enormously satisfying uh, journey. Um, just before we get into the, the meat of my presentation, um, I want to share with you something very exciting we, we uh, did yesterday with the Passive House Institute. Um, we've been holding Passive House designer exams for a decade, and um, paper-based exams, you know, you fly or get a bus to a location. But um, yesterday, um, we did the first pilot um, online exam and you can see here all the examinees were keeping an eye on them I was watching them all from my kitchen table and they're all there sweating a break uh, doing the very stressful passive house designer exam and uh, I want to thank Camille who's on this uh, event here this evening as well for helping us to manage that and really she's the architect of that whole setup so watch this space um, it, you know we're still in the test phase of doing this but it is going to be something for the future. So we're going to be talking about some units this evening, and I thought I would just um, educate the Americans that, you know, there's three countries in the world that don't use metric. Um, so blue is kind of civilized society. Red is, um, well, America and two other small places. And uh, green then is this crazy fucked up place where they use uh, both metric and imperial. That would be the UK, not Ireland, by the way. Um, so I wanted to tell you about this project we're working on at the moment we're as Passive House Consultants. Um, this is uh, quite a large scheme. It's um, 600 Passive House residential units. It's in a, quite an affluent area of Dublin, just on the south side of Dublin. And um, the architects are ABK architects. You can see another view of it here. And um, What's interesting is it's affordable housing, and we have a, a housing crisis in Ireland at the moment. Um, we have, I'm very sad to say, quite a lot of homeless people. That be, you might find that hard to believe. A lot of people living in emergency accommodation, living in hotels, and so forth. And um, so you can see a kind of master plan of the scheme here. Now I'm talking about the length of foundations because one of the things I wanted to look at tonight was the kind of um, learning curve that we're bringing the design team on. So we're working with the architects, the engineers, uh, the M&E engineers, quantity surveyors and so forth. And for a lot of them, it's their first passive house project. And um, so uh, we're sort of going on a kind of a learning curve together. 
So I'll come back to that. So the, the blue, any, anything written in blue is in metric units, and anything written in red is uh, imperial. So as you all know from your building science calculations, how you work out the heat loss from a thermal bridge is you basically multiply the length of the thermal bridge by your climate uh, data, by your heating degree hours. So if you're designing a building, you can't change the length and you can't change your climate unless you move to somewhere like California or somewhere like that. Um, so the psi value um, really, really has a massive impact on the uh, energy demand from your building. And if you've got a really poor psi value, then you're going to need a lot of energy off the grid. Um, so really the focus in, in our projects, and I'm sure all the projects that you're working on as well, is to have a very low psi value. I don't know if you can hear that music or not. <laughs> so really our mission here is to join Dr. Feist and all his friends at BHI to try and sort of uh, eliminate the carbon, so to speak. And we can do that by focusing in on some of those nasty thermal bridges. Um, so, um, so basically, you know, at, at the first design team meeting, we were all kind of shooting the breeze and looking at w what kind of details might we start to develop. And I, I hasten to add, we're literally at the beginning of this process. So I'm kind of sharing this as it's happening. Um, so the structural engineers are putting down some ideas about, uh, you know, they're obviously interested in, in structure and, and uh, they have to create these massive foundations because we're dealing with seven or eight stories which is not super tall, of course, but you know, it's, it's uh, reasonably, uh, it's mid-rise for Ireland. Um, but obviously we've got some breaks in the insulation and you know, we have some thermal bridges to look after there. And then the architects, of course, um, are thinking about things um, you know, more from an architectural point of view. Um, one of the construction systems we're thinking about at the moment is an interior leaf of block with um, external insulation and then um, we call this a cavity wall construction. It's quite popular here in Ireland. And again, you can see uh, the insulation there, um, but there's clearly a sort of piece of the jigsaw uh, missing. So in principle, um, it's a good concept. We're talking about a wrap around, around that concrete beam, but there's, clear, there's you know, clearly a disconnect. And um, so, so these are kind of things that we started to look at early on. So then we're starting to model um, some of these uh, construction details um, in this software. We're starting to use a software called MOLD, M-O-L-D, with the U.S. spelling. And um, so we're starting to, to wrap around. So, so this, is, this is the initial detail, um, you know, tabled by the architects before we really had any great discussion on it. And, um, you know, we're, we, we've got a side value of... 0.23 or 0.133 BTUs per hour foot Fahrenheit, depending on what religion you follow. And, you know, we're working through various iterations. Um, you know, we're trying different insulation thicknesses, uh, different uh, material conductivities. Uh, on the extreme left here, we're doing a wraparound of the insulation. Here, we're just doing the outside and the top with uh, an aerated concrete block here. Um, here, um, we're using thicker insulation in the wall and also more insulation in the floor. So the point is, um, I suppose what we're doing is we're, we're providing a, a pretty quick feedback, uh, kind of iterative design process for the architects to go through all that. And then we're starting to improve the detail a little bit more. And um, in the end, uh, you know, the, where we've got so far is, is this detail here where it really is not proving to be very beneficial to have insulation underneath or on the inside of this large uh, concrete beam. But we are insulating the external and top side, and we've got this aerated concrete block here. So this is just kind of six details I pulled out on the foundation, um, uh, you know, as, as, as a starting process. So you might start looking at these details and say, oh, look, there's big variations here, and Surely these three, you know, God, they don't look too bad. Um, maybe we'll run with one of those. But actually, when you realize then what thermal bridge-free construction is, 
you can see, you know, like we're, 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 we're as we say in Ireland, we're not within an ass's roar of, of where we need to be um, just yet. Um, so while you can see we've sort of uh, had quite an improvement from start to finish, um, we still have a way to go. And we, and we realize that, of course, as passive house consultants. Um, so we're kind of going on this journey with the design team. So what if we what if we kind of quantify that? And, because not everybody can follow BTUs and, and kilowatt hours. Um, what if we kind of visualize that in terms of oil demand? So what would be the amount of oil we would need just to compensate the heat loss through the foundations for this project? Um, so the initial detail that we started off with uh, would take about three and a half thousand liters of oil just to compensate for that heat loss. I mean, it's, it's a phenomenal amount of energy. And if you multiply that, that up by 50 years or 100 years, you're getting into, uh, you know, incredibly wasteful amounts of energy. Where we're at at the moment, um, uh, you know, the so-called best detail, which we can improve on very significantly, you know, we're reducing that down to about 13, 50 liters. And where we want to be is at the passive house um, standard uh, at about 150 liters. So it's really quite shocking, I think, uh, when you see, you know, so on the left we have probably normal, on the right we have, uh, you know, I'm doing my best here, and, you know, uh, on the far right um, we have how it could be. So in truth, um, you know, none of those details are particularly fantastic. So um, there's no good really, they're all just sort of bad and really but ugly. Um, so we sort of need to improve a little bit about that, a little bit on that and sort of need to go back to the drawing board. Um, but that's fine, that's, that's the whole kind of exciting journey that we're on. Um, if we go up the road a little bit, we are doing another project. Um, this is with a, a developer called Durkin Residential. They're very experienced passive house contractors and the architects are McCullough Mulvin Architects. Uh, it's a really gorgeous looking scheme um, of 47 passive house units. Now Durkin's, it's interesting, they're quite experienced at building passive house. They've built some passive house schemes already. And they're lucky, I suppose, because it's not, um, it's, it's only three stories. So the, the foundation detail is a lot easier um, to manage and we're able to get good connection between the wall insulation there in the yellow and in the floor. And again, we're using these aerated concrete blocks in the rising wall. So at that stage, we're getting um, a really quite a good side value. Um, it's not quite thermal bridge free according to the passive house definition, which would be 0 0.006 in US units or 0 0.01 in, in the metric uh, units, but you know, it's pretty good. And this is the photograph that I took on site uh, just about two weeks ago. So you're seeing these three courses of uh, aerated concrete blocks here. So it's always interesting for me uh, you know, to go from a sketch to a thermal model, uh, which, you know, is born out of a design team meeting to actually go on site and to see it being built. And, you know, these guys here are obviously putting this, putting this all together. Um, so that's kind of very satisfying. So um, I was thinking about the journey, you know, that we've, you know, we've been doing Passive House for 15 years and we see the same experience all the time. Whenever we counter, you know, a new team of architects, I just wanted to bring you to my perception of what their journey is. So at the first meeting, you know, um, ignorance is bliss. Look at my details. Uh, what do you think? Aren't they gorgeous? And after the first design team meeting, they say, oh, shit, actually, <laughs> ignorance is actually a bit embarrassing. Uh, you know, and then they go through a phase. Oh, God, did I really design that? Uh, surely, that, you know, I couldn't, have, uh, I couldn't have designed something so silly. And you know, within a very short space of time, you're going, woohoo, look what I can do. Um, I can conquer the world now with, with this. And then of course, um, everybody else um, is an idiot and I'm not doing normal anymore. But what's interesting for us, I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're the most satisfying thing I've had in my passive house career is seeing the journey that people go on and you're bringing people with you and uh, they're, they're sort of really, um, you, 
you're, it's like dropping a pebble in a pond. You're seeing all the benefits of all of that. 